I want to talk to you about therapy because you talk a lot about therapy and on the BK show on stage everywhere you talk about how you went to therapy and it changed your life forever for the better. What do you suggest to those that maybe can't afford therapy because it could be pricey depending on where you're going and who you're speaking to? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. There, there are, believe it or not, if you go online and you search free or low cost therapy or psych psychological help, there are places, actually there's one called Mariposa just right here in Anaheim, right? And they have students, well, they're beyond students, they're people that have education in therapy or marital affairs, uh, communication, uh, you know, things like that. And they will charge you a smaller price for based on your household income. So the price that you would pay for therapy is based on, you know, how much or how little you make. And so Therapy doesn't, you know, would it be great if everyone went to a professional therapist that's got 30 years of experience under their belt and that has a waiting list of like 50 people? Hey, that'd be great. And that person's probably charging $500 a session and they're probably worth it. Mm -hmm. But can you go to a, <clears throat> a therapist that just got their marriage and family therapist license and they're still getting their hours in? And so because they're getting their hours, they're doing therapy at a place and they're not getting paid. The place is getting paid and they're being subsidized by the government and you could still go there. Um, how about subscribing to there? There's plenty of therapists that have YouTube channels, um, that have Instagram pages that have written books. Like if you listen to the podcasts, watch the YouTube channels of these therapists, and some of them tell you like, Hey man, I focus on marriage. I focus on mindset. I focus on, you know, healing from trauma, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Like that's the cool thing about the interwebs, man, is you can, you can find a therapist who is giving away content through their book, through their blog, through their podcast, through their YouTube show, through their Instagram account. And yes, you'll have to piece the content together and apply it to yourself. And guess what? It's not an appointment where you have to make and hope be held accountable. So you have to be accountable to yourself where every week I'm gonna do this stuff. And I learn, listen to the podcast or read that book and I'm gonna journal what I took away from it that's specific to my life. So when you don't have the money to afford a good therapist, you probably have the time and you need to put in the effort to find the time to listen and read and study and then the effort to dismantle it and apply it to your life. So I was actually gonna ask you, my follow-up question was gonna be, do you think everyone should go to therapy? But I think a, a better way, because you kind of answered it, it's, it's important for everyone to go to therapy at some point in their life. Yeah. Everyone has their own different traumas they've dealt with. But I wanna ask you, besides therapy, because we know you're an advocate for going to, to, to talk to someone, besides therapy, what are some tools that you use to help get yourself out of a funk when you're just maybe not feeling good about you know yourself or um, the day is just going to crap or mm -hmm. now that I just heard you talk about it on the show we can talk about your freaking car just got stolen right and you know people passing away and all this stuff just happening and you still have to show up with enthusiasm and bring the thunder on stage and uh, you know be positive and motivational in mm -hmm. your show so what are some things besides you know, you're going to therapists, like what are some yeah. tools that you use? So so let me just touch on the fact that when I, when I say, hey, everyone should see a therapist at some point in their life, like if I said, if I didn't use the word therapist, I said, everyone should see a high performance coach. You'd be like, yeah, I wanna see a high performance coach. <laughs> I wanna be high performance. <laughs> so everyone admits that there's some level of lower performance in their life that they could use improving on. Yeah. So let's just change the word therapist to a coach or a mentor because it doesn't have that negative stigma like a therapist. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right, coach or mentor, that's sexy. Well, fuck, I could use a coach. <laughs> Athletes have coaches. Yeah, but Michael Jordan has Yeah, one. Michael Jordan has a coach, but, but broken people have therapists. It's like, <laughs> right. shut up, man, look. Right. E even if you had like the most perfect childhood, there was probably something that happened, like maybe a dog bit you when you were a child that you don't even remember. And you have this, like you hear a dog bark and you go into like, you know, an anxiety attack. Well, wouldn't you want to actually have a dog and have a pet for your family and not actually go into your trauma body when a dog barks? <laughs> right. I actually know that's a real life example. Like I have a friend who was bit by a dog when he was three. He doesn't mm -hmm. remember. He's just got the scar on his legs, but he will hear a dog, big or small dog bark and he'll like start panicking and freaking out mm -hmm. because his nervous system responds to it, right? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, why don't you get a family dog? They're so, dogs are so good. They're so loving. They're so protective. They're, no way, bro, never, ever. I'm like, why don't you go to a therapist? I ain't broken. I don't need to go to the therapist. Yeah. yeah you don't have to be broken. What yeah. if I, I guess what I need to tell him is why don't you go to a, like a, a life coach, 
right? right? Who can help you figure out through these things. And maybe that will work. So to go back to what you said, like, hey, what do you do when, when as Jason Redmond says in the, the Navy SEAL, when you have these life ambushes? My mom died last September 23rd. So it hasn't been a year that my mom died. Three months before that, I tore my tricep. Two weeks after my mom's death, my son's best friend died. And try consoling your son whose best friend died when young men are not supposed to die just randomly, sure. right? Um, most recently, a couple of days ago, my Ram TRX got stolen from the Four Seasons Hotel in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, and sure. I had souped that thing up, man, like yeah. twenty five, thirty thousand dollars in upgrades. Yeah, I can hear you from across the street before you're coming in. Yeah, man. <laughs> like <laughs> and 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 so but yet I can like joke about it, laugh about it. And right. why is that? Like what is it that I'm able to do that I'm able to let go of all of this very quickly? I realize that life is not linear. Right, so we have to accept some facts. Life is not linear, meaning it's not gonna go exactly as you planned. Mm -hmm. It's good to make a plan, it's good to have a plan, it's good to make sure that that plan makes sense. But as you're executing that plan, things are gonna go wrong. Mom's gonna die, dad's gonna die, my dad broke his hip a few months ago, right? right. We had to put him in, in physical therapy after the surgery and, and, and you know have doctors and shit, like living at my dad's house. Like all these life disasters happen, but I realize one, it's a season. This is, not, this is not how my life is, it's a season and I'm just going through the season. So I have to remind myself, this is a season. Number two, I realize life is not linear, so I expect things to go wrong. This way, I'm not surprised when they go wrong. Mm -hmm. Number three, since I expect things to go wrong and I realize that winning seasons and losing seasons come and maybe right now where my personal life is concerned, I'm in a losing season in some way. All right, I'm not gonna be sad about it, but thank God that I reinforce my mental toughness by always doing hard shit, mm -hmm. right? I always choose the stairs over the escalator. I always far park, I, I, I park far away and then go to the whatever store instead of cruising around looking for that front. And that's like even daily simple shit. I'm doing whether it's the ice bath or the, the Masogis or the suck fest where I'm walking through the middle of the night getting 30 some odd miles in through the middle of the night until the sun comes up. I'm always pushing myself in, in the gym. If, if, I, if I tore a hamstring, I'm working my upper body really well. If I tore my tricep, which I did until it recovered, I was training legs like a fucking savage. I am doing the things that most people aren't willing to do and I'm pushing through challenges at work I'm pushing through if I if I have to make pick up the phone and do the sales calls myself to sell a franchise or coaching or whatever it is I need to do I am willing to do all those hard things instead of complaining about it and mm -hmm. that makes me a hard person and this way when hard times come I go oh one I accepted I expected this number two I'm not cursed it's just a season right. and number three I fortified my mindset physically and mentally to go through this. Mm -hmm. I've done hard shit, and so I'm gonna get out on the other side unscathed, or maybe just slightly bruised and battered. Right. But a winning season is just around the corner. And that's mm -hmm. a fucking cool thing to know. Like, I don't know what other weird shit is gonna happen. Are my other cars gonna get stolen, and then, you know, the HQ burns down and whatever, but I can tell you that I'll make it out to the other side without mm -hmm. going, why is this happening to me? I'm such a victim. Right. That, that doesn't benefit me in any way. Self-mastery means doing what you have to do because you're called to do it over what you want to do because you don't feel like doing it. It absolutely exceeded my expectations. Incredibly epic event, incredibly inspiring. Surround yourself with these millionaires and billionaires and them openly sharing their concepts, their steps. And at BK Lab, every single speaker has been there, done that 10 times over. So much energy, so much motivation and just want to strive to be better just by being here alone. How many seasons, if you had to quantify it, how many seasons do you think more or less that you had to go through before you got to this version? Because I think some people hear this like, well, that's good for him, but I can't do that. You no. maybe just have to keep going through it and then eventually get there. So oh, many sure. Times you know, until um, you kind of got to this version of yourself. There's a, there's a specific type of steel they use for these 
really badass sushi knives that su sushi chefs have. It's called Damascus steel. And in that knife blade, you could see the layers and layers and layers of steel. Like it's like squiggly little layers. And it's because they put this piece of steel in a fire, turns bright hot. They take it out and they start beating it, beating it, beating it, beating it, and then folding it. And as it hardens, they put it back in the fire, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, and fold it. And what you're seeing in that steel is the different layers, like seven, eight, nine times where they put it in the fire, took it out and beat it, and then folded it. And you're seeing the layers. And then when they sharpen that thing, it'll stay sharp for life, like mm -hmm. unless you're cutting through like a fucking tank or something. And I share this with you because those seasons are the going into fire, coming out and getting beaten and folded. So guess what? I'm 50 years old now. In my 40s, I've been able to handle these losing seasons much better than I did in my 20s and 30s. In my 20s and 30s, uh, you know, Maybe I coped with things with alcohol. Maybe I felt like a victim. Maybe I complained to others like, damn, Leighton, why is this happening to me, man? I feel like I'm cursed. This is fucking bullshit. Like, how can like this happen and that happen and that happen and this happen? Like, other people this isn't happening to, right? But as I became more aware, as I did the hard things, as I got older and realized this is what life is. It's seasons of winning and seasons of losing. And, and if you reinforce your mind and your body, the losing seasons, you can shorten. The winning seasons, you can elongate and prolong. Mm -hmm. So now, and by the way, I'm having a winning season in Fit Body Bootcamp and Truling, right? And, and to my core businesses, while I'm having right. a losing season in my personal life with my family in terms of my, my dad, you know, with his broken hip, my mom passed away a year ago, uh, my personal life, my triceps torn and, and you know, Andrew's best friend died and, you know, we, we were trying to console him and my truck got stolen. So sometimes you're having a winning and a losing season. And so mm -hmm. you're celebrating here and then over here, you're just like, all right, what do I need to do to keep putting one foot in front of the other? Because there is a personal life winning season coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. <laughs>